I spoke to uh, a few of you, uh, those watching this channel, and it um, gave me some guidance about how to how to speak and what to bring more on the channel. And the first thing that I feel is important is to continue to realize awareness to, so if you're listening to this right now, you can stay here in this awareness. This very, very simple awareness that is always here, that never changes. And for, for you, if you're watching, to continue to ask yourself, is there awareness? And every time you ask, awareness is realized, yes, there is awareness in the silence. And to question, is it the same? Has it changed? It's still here. And the more this is realized moment to moment, the more you feel, it will feel like being centered. Because we are that center, we are already that. So that's why it's always here. It never changes, it can never go away. It was always here. It was just silent in the background. And when you ask, it's coming to be known as the foreground. And this stable, stable awareness that never changes is the foundation of any experience. There cannot be any experience without that. That has to be there first. And an experience is felt as that when we adopt a thought. So there is just awareness. And then we adopt the thought that there is something else than awareness. We adopt the thought that something's wrong. That there is a situation out there that is causing me here problem. That's when we identified with the character, with the body-mind, and then we feel this is happening to me. I point the body because this is where we identified with, we identify. And just zooming out of the focus of the content and just realizing, okay, I'm here, there is awareness here. And then we're instantly back in the center. It feels center, it, feel, it feels unmoving. Because in reality, awareness is not moving. Awareness is just awareness. It's just here. The sense of presence that has always been here. That presence is our nature, is our being, is our true nature. It never changes. So we are already that awareness. It doesn't have to be found. It's just that it's overlooked when we're totally focused on the content, on the thought, perception. So by asking the question again and again, it reminds ourselves, oh yes, awareness is here. So an experience is created it's a creation by adopting a thought about reality. A 
But reality is already undivided. It's already one. It's already just this. It's already just presence. It's already only being. And when we adopt a thought about reality, we have an experience of something that is not reality. An experience of fear or an experience of anger. So these thoughts, they are polarized. They are left, right. They're not neutral. They can't, a thought is not neutral. We are that which is neutral. So when we adopt thought, we are feeling thrown left to right with emotional state that are mirroring the thought that are the vibration of that thought. If the thought is fearful, then there is fear. If the thought is angry, there is anger. Or if the thought is, I lost something, I will never get it again. There is sadness. But adopting any thought cannot change awareness. Awareness is still present throughout before, during, and after the thought. Because without awareness, there couldn't be any thought. The thought is not aware. We are that awareness already presents itself. That's our nature. Nothing can change our nature. And when we adopt a thought, we go on an, an experience or a, a ride, <laughs> a ride. And when we drop the thought <clears throat> and realize again there is awareness, we're off the ride. So at first it will feel like, oh, I'm off the ride. And then I'm on the ride again, I forgot or I forgot awareness, and then I ask again, is there awareness, and then I'm off the ride. So instead of being on the ride nonstop, there, it starts to have like moments of there is no ride, and then there is a ride, and then there is no ride. So that may feel like a some kind of a on and off, I'm at peace, I'm not at peace, I'm at peace, I'm not. But in reality, the peace is always here. It can never leave. It can never change. It, nothing has, is happening to that. So we leave the peace for a while. We feel or we, it feels as if we leave it. But we're just, we're just momentarily falling asleep in the dream of thinking. And as soon as we ask, is there awareness? we wake up again to awareness. And the more you remind yourself, there is awareness of sadness, there is awareness of anger. I am not that anger, I'm not that sadness. There is awareness of sadness. The more you remind yourself what you really are, the less you forget and the less you fall asleep. And the less you fall asleep, the more obvious it becomes that adopting thought makes us suffer in our being, but doesn't change our being. And at some point it becomes so obvious that there is no more question. There is no more question of trying to understand this. So the more important thing is not to understand it because the mind can never understand its source. The source, its source is awareness and the mind doesn't know awareness. Only awareness knows awareness and only awareness knows thoughts. And we are that that knows. So the practice of asking yourself, is there awareness? That's what you, what's going to bring you back to yourself. That's what's going to reveal that adopting thought is optional. 
It's not mandatory. So I, I spoke about some personal experience, some stories around this, only to, because all I'm saying when I speak about what's happening is a story, because that's the mind too. So it's the story of how it feels to realize awareness. So the story is not the truth. The story is just to communicate how it feels to live from that neutral center, but to still access the mind and still participate in the story, knowing that it's just a story, but you're still participating in it. And the clearer way I can convey that is always through the five kosha. Because we are already infinite being. We are already that pure being. Everything is already that. It's imagine like imagine like consciousness is like a white light and it's projecting. So we are that which is projecting. We are also the space, the screen, the screen of awareness. And everything that appears on the screen has to be made of it. So object, thoughts, people, event. <laughs> but I don't want to make this complicated. So I'll stay with the, the filter. So we are that light. And we can project through different filter. And the first filter is the bliss filter. The bliss is the one that we see in baby, in young baby before awareness is identified with the body. The young baby doesn't know that it's separate. It does not learn. So awareness, looking through the eyes of the baby, has not yet identified that the body is me. And there is bliss. And then after, the second filter is the wisdom body, effortless being. The wisdom body is where we access neutral, being neutral and open. Every object is arising, every thought is arising, emotion are arising. But they're not judged. They're just all seen to be arising equally. So it's very, it's not personal, it's impersonal awareness, neutral and open, living from intuition, living from joy, living from being inspired. What would I love to do and do that? Living with the wisdom body is, is in unity consciousness. It's not adopting the thought that something is wrong, not adopt, adopting the thought that this person, this seeming separate person should be in, in, a, in any other way than it is. You stop managing the content of experience, not only thought and emotion, but everything, every people, everything is seen to be equally the same thing. And that is giving us access to higher vibration frequency because there is no judgment of experience, there is no adoption that I feel sad and I shouldn't feel sad and I am stupid or I, all these thoughts, they're not, they're just seen to be noise without meaning. We don't give meaning to things in that in the wisdom body. We don't say, oh, if this happened, I would feel like that. Because we're not in the mental body yet. We're just effortless being. And that we can see in child before the age of two, 
children will go from laughing to sadness to laughing. And there is no thought about should and should not. And even like before we have been hypnotized <laughs> in the program, a child may go to a party and just leave because they, they feel tired and they want to go home and that's it. I want to go home, I'm leaving. There's no, oh, maybe I should say goodbye to everyone. What would they think of me? There's no none of that story yet. So it's effortless. I go, I want to go, I go. I don't want to go, I don't go. There is no, you have to there. The wisdom body is the most easiest accessible lens and the, it's the most practical because in that body in that wisdom body you go to work you have friends you participate while you're being neutral and open you you're not outside of life you're in life from a higher frequency vibration because when you are neutral and open and everyone knows that everyone has experience of that it's just that we feel we may believe that it's hard to access but it's right here it's always here as soon as we we drop the opinion we come back to neutral and open it may seem boring at first but if you stay there it reveals more and more joy because above neutral and open the vibration is is not personal so joy, love, unconditional love, fun, uh, aliveness, peace, all of these vibrations that we love, they are present when we're not in the mental body. So the third filter is the mental body. It comes after, it comes after neutral. When we go in the mental realm, in the mental body, we accept invitation to experience. So we may experience grief, we may experience anger, we experience sadness. It's just an experience that we consent to by adopting a thought. But it's if it's 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 happening so fast that at, at first we feel we're already in it before we realize we adopted the thought so so once we realize we're in it we can just zoom out and say okay that's a thought is that really real is that really why would that be real it's just a point of view it's one of many point of view it's just a limited lens of perception it's a limited point of view it's a proposition that we can accept or decline so when we live a lot in the mental realm, we feel depleted of energy because we feel we, we're thrown left to right constantly and we can never stay center and it feels really tiring. So if we have accepted an invitation without realizing and we're in it in the middle, in the middle of turmoil, we can just step back and say, okay, I'm opening the lens of perception. I'm here. Nothing is happening. If I don't adopt a story about what's happening, I can stay here present. There is awareness. So you ask the question, is there awareness here present? Yes, awareness is still here. It never leaves and it feels more centered. So you've just retrieved your energy from the mental reality, the mental realm. So you stop fueling this with your own power. You remove your power from it. You reclaim your power. You stay in your power. And that power is living from energy, creativity, inspiration. That's the reward of removing our consent to fuel polarity. And those that are around us that want to fuel it, it's okay, they can fuel it. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change what you are. It doesn't change what they are. It's just that they're more they're more in the ride. They just, you love to take the ride. You take the ride until you realize it's optional. Maybe they have not realized it's optional and it's not their fault. 
it's not the fault. It's not our fault. Nothing is our fault. It was just not realized. And it's not communicated that much. So, so that 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 is the, um, the balance where you can you go in the right, you step out of the right. And if it's too hard to step out of the ride because the feeling is so strong that you need to, you feel you need to defend yourself or now you've really adopted the thought as if it's really, really true. That is, a, that is most probably because there is a strong emotion attached to that thought. And that emotion is making it seem really real because for the game to be, you know, fun or plausible <laughs> it has to feel really real so you you've adopted the thought it's hard to let go because there is a strong emotion attached to it then feeling the feeling from the wisdom body being non-judgmental towards the feeling bringing it love and compassion and how you bring love and compassion to the energy, you just listen to the energy. It says, it's not fair. This is not fair. You listen to the energy, it's not fair. From the place of neutral and open, from the wisdom body. Because in reality, there is nothing to process. It's just that it seems this way. So even when I say processing and feeling, it's not necessary. Because that's a story too. So when I use these words, I feel I might refine my vocabulary because my vocabulary may imply the error. So I'm trying to be careful with the vocabulary. So it's not that there's something to process, but because there's a strong emotion attached to the thought, maybe it's an emotion we felt really, really often. It's an habitual way of being. It was learned and it's really deeply like we've just adopted it so many times, then listening to the emotion with care, love, and compassion, I see you, energy that feels this is not fair. I see you, I, I am that presence, the wisdom body, this open, neutral presence of awareness. Awareness doesn't speak, but I'm putting words to it so that you can have the sense and the feeling and even if you you say it in your mind it doesn't matter you can feel the energy and say it's okay there is space for you here i see you and the energy that feels it's not fair will feel seen finally and love and dissolve it's not that the energy has any feeling but it's the alchemy of processing that or Meeting that with the pure, unconditional, neutral, and openness of awareness. It's not that awareness is love. Awareness is not love, but being neutral and open without opinion, we could call that unconditional love. So the relationship between what you are, this pure awareness, and the the emotion and the thought which form the impression of, of a character has to be love. Because that energy that feels it's not fair, even if you scream outside to the seeming outside world, it's not fair. No one can give you what, no one can give that energy what it needs unconditional love and you are that you can do that because you are that that awareness presence is so open so innocent that we could call it conditional love so you you if if the thought cannot be dropped you feel the energy you let it be you let it move in the body if there's an emotion will be appearing in, in a physical vibration because it's really we're getting really close to the physical form. So now the fourth that that's the fourth filter emotion the emotional body. So the emotional body is is coming after the mental body. So the emotion is 
appearing because there's a thought. There is a thought that is creating that experience because the emotion comes after. It may seem it comes first, but it, there's always a thought because if you look closely, no one can deplete you of your peace of being from outside because everything that comes through us seemingly outside comes through a thought, a thought about this person, a thought about this this event. So this it is the thought that is taking us on a ride, left and right, into duality, into polarity. And that and that's why we feel depleted, fearful, sad, scared, all of this low vibration energy. Um, a shame there has to be identification with a thought to feel this energy so to remove the, the charge that makes us adopt the thought either we decline it if you can it's most like super efficient <laughs> it's even easier because you don't have to spend any energy doing it so if it feels authentic that you can decline the thought thank you this thought will stop appearing. The thought that appeared before, per se, let's say I felt misunderstood. These thoughts have been just declining enough that they don't appear anymore. And usually the first invitation, when you start to realize your true nature, the, the first invitation, they're the, they're the most intense. So you may have to decline them three, four, or five times. And usually by the time you decline an invitation, three, four, or five times, they don't appear anymore. There will be other invitation and you deal with them consciously from the effortless body, from the wisdom body. You deal, you deal with the invitation con consciously. No, thank you. I've been on that ride. I don't wish to go on the ride. If it doesn't feel authentic, that the no is really clean, you don't want to develop the patron of declining an invitation because you don't want to feel something. So that's why I say it's not denying an invitation. Denying will feel more like, oh, it doesn't exist. It's just a thought. It, it's, it's not going to feel clean. And declining will be no, thank you, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine here. And if if it feels like denying, then drop in the emotion body and then allow the feeling. Listen to the feeling and give it so much love that it it dissolves in awareness. And then you deal with the feeling consciously. There may be more feeling. Feeling disappointment, feeling boredom, feeling um, unfairness, agitation, restlessness. You just deal with them with just staying with the body. You stay grounded with the body. How does it feel in the body? You sense the sensation. Stay with the sensation as a sensation. And then you feel there's space around the sensation. There is space around you. There is space for you here. There is space. Awareness is like a you, a big space. And as the as you deal with the emotion, the, the emotional body will will align. So mental body and emotional body will align, and there's a feeling of staying centered. So the more you deal with the invitation, the less you fall asleep into them, and the less you fall asleep the easier it gets. So at first, it's more difficult. The strong, strong emotion, they come first. They want you to stay in the game. <laughs> but you are the power fueling the game. So you can remove your consent. You can just take your power back. And the fifth body is the physical body, the physical form. So it's one of the body that we have access to, to experience. The same as the mental body, the emotional body, the physical body is a vehicle of the form where we can 
you know, move around, go for a walk, cook, and have activities. And it's the it's the it's a beautiful vehicle to be here in form to to experience all of this. So the experience is harder when we adopt a lot of thoughts and it becomes easier and easier when you realize your true nature and you remove consent from going on those rides. And no one is forcing us to go on this ride. We are the sovereign being. We are infinite being accepting. We are consenting to the ride. No one is, no one can force anything upon us. We are that power, that power of consciousness that is having access to these filters. So that's how I, I feel is the simplest way to explain. And so there is nothing to get. There is just realization of something that is already our nature. So that's why it's never an attainment. It's really a dropping away of what is not real. Reclaiming your natural state of being. And in that realization, there is also the realization that everything that is appearing in awareness from here is can be um, embraced, can be not not as a person, you know, having no boundary or anything like that, but it's like it's your own slice of the universe appearing here the trees and the cats and the people it's just naming these is is the story but it's it's a beautiful story you are uh, it's like we each have our own little slice and um yes i just lost my train of thought so it's It's to live this this human experience from the wisdom body, from from being neutral and open and and out of the game of suffering. Ah, that's what I wanted to say. Everyone appearing in the body is the infinite being, so they are allowed to consent to their to their ride. It's it's like they're not separate in in reality. They all we are all awareness in awareness but as a separate experience human experience they have their their own human experience it's the infinite being having a, another human experience through another body as the infinite being everyone is allowed to consent there is nothing wrong so 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 if the feeling of disappointment has been truly allowed in here, around this body-mind, in, in my awareness here, in this focal point, because we each have a focal point, then disappointment over there in the form of another person is, is allowed too. Because that's the same thing. If I resist disappointment that is appearing out there, seemingly, it's because I resist it from in here. So outside, we cannot change the world by trying to change the outside because it's like we would try to change an image in a mirror. It's never going to change by trying to change the image. So you change in here not that you have anything to change, even the word change is not right. You, you realize awareness here. It's here. It's my nature. It's our true nature, everyone's nature. It's not personal. Dissolve the power charge of thoughts to bring you into suffering. 
And with that, the mirror will change. The image has to change. You don't have to change the image. And you don't even have to change the content in here, like the content of thoughts, the content of emotion, you don't have to change it. You don't have to manage it. You don't have to, 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 you don't have to work on it. You decline the idea that you have to work on it also, because that's another limitation that we can impose on ourselves. That, that's another thought we can adopt. So in reality, we can decline the whole thing at once. Done. Done. But in my direct experience, it took a little bit of time. That's why I say to me, it took like it take it took two years to go around it. Oh, this thought, this thought, this emotion, that, that. But what is two years in a in a in a human life? It's not long. <laughs> I was dedicated. I just asked, is there awareness? And I I continue to to realize, yes, there is awareness here. What is happening really if I don't label it? And through that process, you keep common sense. You keep common sense. You stay grounded in the body. You stay. That's why I want, I explain it with this five kosha because I feel it's the simplest way to realize and to become conscious of where I am operating from and what is experience depending on where I am operating from. So it's easy to put the light of consciousness on that. It's kind, it's just simple, simple. So everything is going on as normal going to work, having friends, and dealing consciously with this. Because as soon as something is dealt with, it's gone. And then there's something else that comes and you deal with it and it's gone. So it's kind of, you start to deal with everything consciously. And you stay more and more in the natural state of being, which is non-judgmental. Our being is benign. Our being is just open awareness. It doesn't judge. It doesn't, it's just awareness. It's just, the stable, stable, normal, just presence. We've mistaken our identity as being the person, but we are the presence. We've always been, but I've forgotten for a while. So it's kind of like you you return to the uh, childlike, playful energy with the wisdom of an adult. So it's very, very simple. So there's nothing to make complicated and, and through what is said here don't believe it explore it make it your own by exploring it and asking yourself what does it do is it true is it not question it explore it experience it so that it's not only a belief that it's a discovery that it's a real experiential, felt, lived experience. All right, so I will try and keep making the message clearer and clearer. We're trying to use the proper language so that I don't distribute error in communication because then when I say feel everything it's not necessary if there is a feeling I wouldn't avoid it I would just explore it oh that's interesting there is a feeling here 
But it's not that you have to process everything and there's a whole pile of things to process. We are infinite being. You don't have to consent to that belief either. But discerning in yourself, you can discern if the feeling needs attending to, if it needs love and compassion from presence so you bring all you bring your character in the presence of presence or you bring the mind and the and the emotion in the presence of presence discern in yourself if if you can decline the whole story right right away i mean do it it's because anyway we only that's the other thing i forgot to say is that we can only exist in this moment, in this moment. There's never a future moment where we will exist or we will experience something. There's never a future moment. We can only exist in this moment. Existence is only in this moment. And every moment is a vibration of either I adopt a thought or I rest in my being it's it's so it's not to believe that another moment will come where i will have dealt with all of that that's just another adoption of a thought it's just it's just looking at life through the filter of the mental realm through the thought it's to inquire how what is really happening in this moment so in this moment, you're listening to this, to my voice. There is just a sense of presence. There is most of the time. And in, in fact, in reality, in truth, all the time, there is only presence. And we are adopting thoughts and that creates a story of something happening. So, so, so if in your environment, there are other beings that are, let's say they are angry, but you stay in awareness and you say, okay, I'm here in awareness. There is awareness. There is awareness of angry people. There is awareness of, let's say, calmness or, or stress. There is awareness of, so that, that will give you a space in between that this is happening to you that will start to give a space and the more space there is the more it is seen that there really really is nothing happening that even the people being angry it's another story it's still looking through the mind at the experience in reality there is only awareness and everything that arises and dissolving it is awareness. So thoughts, the thoughts about the person. But it's it's fine to just stay with the simple, simple way I've just explained at first because you don't want to become entangled in the mental, trying to understand that because that will prevent you to directly experience it. So it's much, much better. You stay with your direct experience. What does it do to, body, to the body? When I rest in awareness, when I, I just, I'm just here present, there are, where I'm going to give name to things because to express in words, we, we do have to give name, but I could say uh, there's awareness of the birds singing, awareness of a tree. And all of these names, at some point, they dissolve and there is just awareness. There is just presence and it's everywhere. Everywhere there is just presence. In, in the bird, in the form of a tree, it's presence. That's looking from the wisdom body. Every form is arising and dissolving equally. Thoughts and emotion. And, and that's that's close to bliss. That's that's the flavor close to bliss so bliss you cannot try to get to bliss because we never get to bliss from a mental activity we never get to bliss from you can't go from the mental body to bliss because in between 
there is the wisdom body, the effortless being body. So as you stay in effortless being, effortless being is being available to what's here, responding to what's here without trying to do anything, without trying to help, without trying to change the world, just responding effortlessly to what is arising without an opinion about what is arising. And when you rest more and more in the effortless but being the wisdom body, the lens of bliss become more available or because bliss is most more subtle than the wisdom body. So as the wisdom body is, is you're resting there more and more, um, it becomes more light and then and then bliss is revealed underneath because it's always here. It's just that when we dive into the mental realm and the emotional the emotional body will reflect that and then we're far from bliss but bliss never leaves either because nothing is ever not here our awareness is always here and everything else is always here but it's a matter of knowing consciously where you reside or from where you operating from and to know where it's really easy because a wisdom body will feel spacious and open and neutral. It's going to feel open and neutral. And the mental body will feel more contracted with uh, desire. I want this, I want that, I don't like this, I don't like that. It's more uh, turbulent. It will feel more turbulent because it's it's more contracted than, than the, the wisdom body. So happy exploration. I hope this helped clarify and uh, stay present, keep common sense and just deal with what's arising. You have everything in you. There are no guru. There are no guru because we are it. Everyone is already it. So there is no need to follow any guru. The li life is yourself showing you. <laughs> so life will bring to you the trigger that needs to be seen that so that you can see them and you can even say thank you for the trigger to show me that you're here so that i can put the light on it and it dissolve so the only guru is life and intuition your own intuition and your own sense you are sovereign being no one can give that to you because it is what you are already so there is no need to try to find someone to give you anything you have everything in you you are that already okay bye bye